uh, in this lecture we are going to have going to have a look at the result of relaxing one more important assumption of the classical linear regression model the assumption i'm talking about is that the error terms ui and uj are not correlated it is called the assumption of no autocorrelation so what happens if this assumption is violated the term autocorrelation can be defined as correlation between members of series of observations either ordered in time or ordered in space when i say ordered in time i'm referring to time series data and i'm saying that the members of this date uh, series of data are correlated between each other when i say correlated over space i'm talking about correlation being observed in cross sectional data in particular we are concerned about correlation between the error terms ui uj and so on so like i said in the classical linear regression model we assume that such autocorrelation does not exist you can see here we say we symbolically represent this as covariance of ui comma uj given xi xj is equal to expectation of ui uj which is equal to 0 okay this is how symbolically you write that the error terms are not correlated now remember we have three basic types of data sets we have cross sectional data that is at a point of time we are we have data regarding um a large number of variables we have time series data where we have one or two variables which are recorded over time uh typical examples you have gdp from 1985 to 2020 cross sectional data example would be uh in the current year we are if we are looking at the consumption expenditures of different families and how it is being if influenced by say the income of the families the wealth of the families the residential status of the families and finally we have pooled data pooled data is a combination of cross sectional as well as time series data example would be if you have this consumption expenditure data of different families their incomes their wealth and their residential status and you have all these data for a period of say 10 to 20 years so you have time series data for every variable as well as at a point of time you can have the entire cross section of data okay so pooled data will always have characteristics of cross sectional as well as time series data now among these three data types generally we say that the problem of heteroskedasticity arises or is typically seen in cross sectional data whereas the problem of autocorrelation is more associated with time series data i am saying generally it is not impossible that even in cross sectional data you may have autocorrelation if by chance co- autocorrelation is observed in cross sectional units we term it as spatial autocorrelation so it, it means it is correlation in space rather than over time the observations in time series data on the other hand they often follow a natural ordering over time so successive observations of a same variable are likely to exhibit intercorrelations this is especially so if you're talking about a short duration say a week a day or maybe a month so if you're talking about time series data regarding um, stock values share values in the share market it is very reasonable to assume that there will be correlations intercorrelations between the variables 
ordered in time so in all these situations you are violating the assumptions of no autocorrelation or no serial correlation between the error terms let's have a look at the nature of the problem the classical model assumes no autocorrelation and no serial correlation which means the disturbance term of any particular observation corresponding to any particular x variable is not influenced by the disturbance term related to any other observation again um let's try and understand this in terms of examples say you are looking at a particular industry's output over every quarter okay so if there is a strike that happens in any one quarter the classical linear regression model assumes no autocorrelation which means the effect of a strike in say quarter 1 is not expected to have any influence on the output in the following quarters okay so in there was a strike in quarter 1 so the output for quarter 1 the first quarter of the year was less okay so the deviation from average will be ex, uh, captured by the error term for that quarter in the next quarter we are assuming that the error term is not correlated which means the strike in the last quarter q1 will not have any influence on the output levels in q2 the second quarter similarly uh, that is a time series example because you are looking at output uh the variable output over a time period quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 and quarter 4 and so on now let's take an example of cross sectional data like i was saying suppose you are studying consumption expenditures of families and how it is being influenced by the family incomes now if one family in our sample experiences an increase in income it will uh influence in the form of increasing the consumption expenditure but the this increase in consumption expenditure need not affect the other families in the sample right however That or that is the assumption that classical linear regression model makes. However, in reality, it is possible that the strike in quarter one had negative impact on the second and third quarters as well. So it is possible that. the output in quarter 2 and quarter 3 are less because of the influence of a strike that happened in the first quarter right similarly in our cross consumption expenditure example it is possible that because the consumption expenditure of one of the families went up maybe there are a few other families in our sample whose consumption expenditure went up so uh, in microeconomics you might have learned keeping up with the joneses effect that is because the neighbors have increased their consumption expenditure changed their living pattern in response to that or imitating that maybe the other families also increase their consumption expenditure even though their incomes have not increased so if such a pattern is uh, there the error terms will tend to be correlated and if this is what is being observed in the empirical data that means our 
assumption of no autocorrelation is being violated. Now in this regard just one note uh, for you to keep in mind. Um, if we are being very technical, the term autocorrelation and serial correlation mean very different things. That is, autocorrelation means that the series U1, U2, U10 are all correlated with a lagged series of the same error terms. So U1, U2, etc. till U10 is co correlated to U2, U3, etc. till U11. Okay, a lag of one time period. So that when you are talking about correlation between a given series and its lagged members, you are talking in terms of autocorrelation. On the other hand, serial, or serial correlation actually means correlation between two different series ordered in time. So U1, U2, etc., U10 is correlated with V2, V3, etc., V10. So U and V are two different time series. Of course, um, for the discussion that we are having, we are going to use these two terms interchangeably. Just keep in mind that if you are being technically correct, there is a slight difference in the meaning of autocorrelation and serial correlation. Now, let's have a look at the reasons for autocorrelation. Uh, one of the common reasons is inertia. Inertia or sluggishness is a feature that is common in most time series, especially economic time series. So examples of time series would be observations on GNP over, um, over many years, price indices, industrial production, employment, etc. Now all these important time series variables exhibit cyclical tendencies. So if you are going through a period of boom, there will be an upward movement in all these variables. And if you are going through a recession, then every, every period's observation will be less than the preceding period. So this sluggishness or the cyclical nature of the variables leads to autocorrelation between the error terms of the data. A second source of autocorrelation would be some sort of specification bias. In particular, I am talking about excluded variables case. Understand this in terms of the example. Say you are trying to estimate demand for a certain commodity. Say uh, for the market of, you are trying to estimate the demand for pork. Now the quantity demanded of pork will be affected by the quantity the price of pork, um, the income of the family and you can also think of the price of related good beef as being an important explanatory variable. If for any reason you omit the price of the related good that is price of beef, you will observe a correlation pattern among the residuals of the model. This is because it is not only picking up the random error or disturbance term but also the systematic influence of this omitted variable price of beef. Depending on the empirical study, sometimes the topic of topic of study itself is associated with autocorrelation. For example, in the agricultural commodities market, we observe something called the cobweb phenomenon. The supply of most agricultural commodities reacts to the price 
with a lag of one time period you have uh, you have come across this cobweb phenomenon in your micro 2 classes in ug and probably even in your uh, pg first year first semester so the supply of a particular agricultural commodity in this period will be in response to the prices that existed in the market in the last period this is because the supply decisions take time to implement that is there is a gestation period involved in such a situation your disturbances ut that is disturbance term in period t will not be random because if your farmers overproduced in the last period they are likely to reduce their production in the current period and so on um the existence of lags the importance of lagged variables in the regression model could also be a reason for autocorrelation being observed in the sample for example consumption expenditure is not only being determined by income in the current period but also can be expected to be a function of consumption expenditure in the previous period so ideally your model will be most correct if it includes not just the variable income in the of the current period t but also consumption expenditure in period t minus 1 such regressions are called auto regressions because one of the explanatory variables is the lagged value of the dependent variable so i'm saying that consumption expenditure in period t is a function of income in period t as well as consumption expenditure in period t minus 1 plus the disturbance term ut now if you omit this variable now in the original form such a model is called auto regressive model okay because uh, yt minus 1 is an explanatory variable for yt but if you omit this important explanatory variable the systematic influence of y t minus 1 beta 3 times y t minus 1 will be captured in the error term of the model that is run so if you only instead of running this model if you only run y t equals to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x 1 t plus an error term v t your error term v t is capturing the combined influence of beta 3 times y t minus 1 as well as u t and that's why you will find that a systematic pattern exists between error terms vt vt minus 1 vt minus 2 and so on another source of autocorrelation between the error terms could be the manipulation of data when you are doing empirical analysis we often get raw data which needs to be smoothened using various data techniques for example we probably have monthly data and from that we might take three yearly moving averages to get quarterly data or um in the example of census studies you have the population figures for every decade so you have population figure for 2001 you will have it for 2000 uh, 2000 2001 you will have it for uh, the year 2010 2011 
and for the population figures in the in between years you would want to interpolate using these two data points or you might even extrapolate for additional data points such data massaging techniques impose a systematic pattern on the data or on the variables that we are using in the regression model even if in the original pure form or the pure model there is no such autocorrelation um other methods of data trans uh, transformation such as the first difference form data transformation which is often often carried out for certain purposes can also lead to autocorrelation of the error terms um for example taking the first difference form if you remember we had uh, used uh, suggested this method for handling heteroscedasticity in he cross sectional data by the first difference form i mean this suppose i'm taking a simple two variable model so i have yt is beta 1 plus beta 2 xt plus ut now because of heteroscedasticity suppose i take the lagged variables uh, of all these variables that will be yt minus 1 will be equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xt minus 1 plus ut minus 1 the first difference form is where you are subtracting these two equations so that you have yt minus yt minus 1 being regressed on beta 1 and beta 1 will cancel out so you will have beta 2 times xt minus xt minus 1 and the error term is ut minus ut minus 1 this can be written as delta yt is equal to beta 2 times delta xt plus i can write this as vt where vt is actually ut minus ut minus 1 so in the this equation 1 is called the equation in first difference model so you are basically regressing change in the x variable on the change in the dependent y variable suppose you have done this data transformation to resolve the problem of heteroscedasticity in the data as you can see now the error term vt is now likely to be correlated to vt minus 1 vt minus 2 and so on because of the way it has been constructed it is ut minus ut minus 1 so it is likely to be correlated to the error term vt minus 1 so such data transformation methods can also lead to or induce correlation among the error terms even though the original model did not suffer from the problem now remember these kind of models are called dynamic regression models uh, which involve lagged regressions regressions are lagged explanatory variables um so such techniques it might solve the problem of heteroscedasticity but it will give rise to a new problem of auto autocorrelation between the error terms finally uh like i said autocorrelation is more generally and typically seen with time series data if you have non stationarity in time series data that is both your dependent variable y and independent variable x are both non stationary then it is likely that your error term u will also be non stationary um we don't need to go 
too much into the depth of uh, time series analysis so just understand this much that a time series will be called stationary if its main characteristics that is mean variance covariance etc do not vary over time or do not change over time so if mean variance covariance etc are time invariant we call that series a stationary time series and if you are dealing with a model where your y and x are both non stationary the error term u will automatically become non stationary and it will tend to exhibit autocorrelation so these are your various sources of autocorrelation autocorrelation in the data um that's it for the time being in my next lecture i will uh, discuss the various consequences of autocorrelation